Okay, so we've got our, uh, our Browduino, it's all built, everything's looking fantastic, and we've uploaded the latest version of Ardbear. Some things we need to do before we use it. If we use it without setting it up, uh, then you'll find that it won't work properly. So let's go into Setup, and we're going to set up some of the settings. So let's set up the PID, and um, automatically see it's set on gas. That's not going to help us very much, so we want to change that to electric. Uh, the constant... Uh, these settings for the PID are settings you're going to need to play around with and see what you are comfortable with. Uh, 100 is a pretty good start. Um, KI, let's drop it down to about 15. This is These are settings I'm choosing based off what I've used in other versions of Ardbeer in the past and the PID that they've uh, configured. But you're going to need to pick, so I'm picking 5 for the KD. Sample time, uh, You'll see that there's just that errant six there. It's it's actually still the same. You just need to, to pick it. I'm going to go up to three and a half thousand for the window size, which is three and a half seconds. Um, oh, All right. We'll go with samples. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, how, how much heat do you want the boil? If you are if you've overspecced your elements, then you might want to turn this down. For me, I need it 100 percent, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, calibration is if you want to change, so if your temperature probe is measuring differently to your actual um, real temperature. So if you get another digital thermometer and place it in the, the boil and check what your Browduino or Ardbeer controller, uh, uh, Browduino controller with the Ardbeer software is measuring, then you can and change it. So if you need to you know, do a negative or if you need to do a positive to adjust the temperature slightly, you can. Uh, for mine, it's it's pretty much bang on. All right, so that's the PID settings done. Uh, and as I said, if you know if you're finding that the boil, uh, if it, it if it goes close to set points and then doesn't quite reach them quick enough, then you might want to adjust some of those settings. All right, so we'll go down the unit parameters. We need to set those as well. So of course, for most of you, you're probably going to want to use Celsius, the the uh, the sensible version. And then sensor for most of you, your sensor is going to. If you've got any sort of kit where you're trying to do recirculation inside a single vessel, then you want the temperature inside of the pot. Uh, temperature for the boil, I'm going to go with 101 degrees. The pump cycle, this is going to be every 15 minutes. And it rests uh, for how long? And in our case, we're going to say it rests for two minutes, which is, I think, more than enough. Uh, do we want the pump to be on during pre-mash? Yes, we do. Uh, do we want the pump on when we're mashing in? For me, yes, I do, and I control that using a controller on my ball valve that I um, that I use. So I control the flow on the on the, the system using a, a ball valve, and then I leave that on. Uh, do I want the pump on in mash out? Uh, so that's when you're actually going through the the last final step. Uh, I really like recirculating during that stage. Uh, I definitely leave it on. Do I want the pump on in the boil? Uh, no, I do not. The the actual boil will produce enough of a vigorous circulation that you don't need it at that point. Once you get above 80 degrees, it's fine. Uh, PID pipe means uh, when the malt pipe is being, when it's saying it's ready to be taken out, do you want the PID turned on? So will it continue to keep the, the temperature? So if you've got it mash out at 80 degrees, then it will continue to keep it at 80 degrees. I want it active to do that. Uh, do I want I... Oh, do I want to skip the, the the prompt for whether we add the add the the mash or not? Uh, I'm going to go with no. So I want it to beep at me and tell me and wait until I've t confirmed that I've mashed in. Uh, do I want it to skip when I've removed the malt pipe? Again, my malt pipe at the moment is inside, or the, my you know my mash is inside the inner pot. So I actually do need to remove it. So I'm going to go with no. Uh, do I want to skip the iodine test? Yes, I do. I personally find that uh, annoying. Uh, do I want a whirlpool? So I think that's about whether or not you want the pump on. Uh, so for me, I want it to. You can. I would experiment with it and see what you do. I'm not sure exactly what the settings are to be honest. Uh, I'm going to leave it off, and that's the unit parameters done. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the automation for the system. Uh, so we need to say what temperature do we want to mash it in. You can see it says 4095.94 that's because there is no temperature probe currently attached to the system. Uh, so let's, my mash in is going to be for me generally I'm going to mash in at 40 degrees. Uh, I'm going to um, go down to 50 degrees so this is a, basically a protein roast to, to give a bit of head retention. 
and I'm just going to make it brief. Ten minutes. Uh, I'm going to skip. Um, skip. Okay, first alpha amylase. I'm going to run. I usually this is generally roughly what I run. So I usually set this up and I'll modify it as I go through. So let's say I, I usually have about 60 to 3 degrees, and that's going to give me a, a high fermentability. And so I'm going to do that for about 15 minutes. And then my second step, I'm going to take that down to about 66. This is going to be give me more of the 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 body in the beer. Oops, 66. And I'm going to run that at about 40 minutes or so. Okay, and then I'm going to run at about 72. I'm going to drop that down. I only do a short rest at 72, normally for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, and even as I'm doing that, I realize there's going to be people saying, why do you do that? And I actually don't remember exactly why I do it. I need to look it up and see what I've written down. Um, 80 degrees for mash out it gives me a little bit of uh, it gives it a heat so it all flows nicely when you're sparging uh, and it pulls the grain out and it pulls the, the wort out of the grain nice and easily uh, should be about 20 20 minutes at 80 degrees number of hops of course uh, I usually do about five at the most and I'm going to do one about 30 minutes. Uh, my second hops, let's say we do about 20 minutes and then 10 minutes, 5 minutes and at 0 minutes and it's give me another one. So we'll put that also mash it, uh, flame out and there we're done. So now uh, you can also manage recipes and save recipes. I actually find that I usually don't end up doing it. Uh, even though I thought it would be amazing and brilliant and I could just load all these recipes I use all the time, I found that generally I just modify the mash steps on the automation and that works really well for me. So once you've got that set up, then it should be good to go. So now if we go to our manual mode, uh, it'll ask us some questions. Is the water added? Yes, it is. Turn the heat on, turn the pump on, and it will all work uh, perfectly, of course. You can see we've got indication here and here, but it also means we've got the, the light showing up here. So some people are having issues uh, with it, including myself, uh, with it not showing up, the, the heating, the, the output was not turning on, and the reason was because it was set to gas in the settings. So that's how you set up Ardbeer. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, you will need to play around with the PID settings to get that appropriate for your rig. Alright, good luck! Okay, so I was just doing a quick uh, watch through of that video I just made, and I just realized in the automation I made a mistake. So let's just have a look, see what I did. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set the automation. In the automation, you can see I've set up all my steps. Uh, the times that I've set them for, I skipped both those two, that was okay, 63, 15, 66, 40, 72 for 20, 84, 20, and number of hops, 5. Here, that is the boil duration, so 90 minutes is what I've set mine to. Uh, plenty of people boil for 60 minutes, I've only even had some people add going as short as 30 minutes, up to you of course what you do. Uh, and then we've got our number of hops, so I've set that to 30, to 20, to 10, to 5, to 0. Alright, so that's just the, a quick update just to make sure you understand. Um, so that boil one that you saw is actually how long you're going to boil for. Alright, have fun.